Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all doing super, super well. Thank you guys so much for being here. Today, we're gonna be talking about such a difficult case and it's just really hard to listen to the details of this because it's something that we continue to see. You know, women facing violence and losing their lives at the hands of their partners. Today, we're gonna be talking about what happened to 24-year-old Brenda Micaela Gordillo and how her boyfriend murdered her. It's a heart-wrenching case and something that just makes me so angry about about this case is that her boyfriend was very vocal on social media about supporting women. He would tweet things such as, this 14th of February, don't give women flowers or treats. Just stop burning them, beating them, and killing them. Thank you very much. In another tweet, he stated, quote, it sucks for girls that there are so many loose, sick men out there. So he was tweeting these things, you know, showing his support for women, yet he ended up murdering his girlfriend and burning her body. It's just absolutely disturbing the fact that he literally said like stop burning women and stop killing them but then he went and did exactly that it is absolutely frightening it's disturbing and it's just so so evil we're definitely going to get more into his social media a little bit later in the video because there's definitely more to it you just truly never know a person and that's just really scary to think about you know how this type of violence is so common this case took place in argentina and in just the first two months of 2020 there were 63 femicides in argentina and those are only the registered ones. Like I have said in past videos, you know, there is progress being made, but women are still being killed every single day. I just truly admire all the women out there who are attending the protests and the marches on behalf of all of us and just making sure that our voices and the victims' voices are heard and never forgotten. Their efforts not only honor the memory of the victims, but also strive to create a safer world for women. With that being said, I do just want to give a shout out to a couple of amazing organizations that are so supporting women that are working towards ending femicides and ending violence against women. So I will leave those amazing organizations down below and I also will be making a donation to them on behalf of the familia because they are doing such amazing work at supporting women, at protecting us, and just trying to make the world safer for us. I do just also want to put a trigger warning because we are going to be discussing DV and graphic details. Now let's jump right in and let's talk about what happened to Brenda. Brenda Micaela Gordillo was born on May 6, 1995 in Catamarca, Argentina. Since she only had brothers, Brenda and her mom, Maria, were very close. They were just like best friends, you know, since they were the only girls of the family. They would love to just hang out together, go shopping, go to the movies. And Maria really spoiled her only daughter. And again, they just were best friends and inseparable. Growing up, Brenda was very athletic and she just absolutely loved doing sports. As she got older, she began going to the gym, you know, working out and she also began playing field hockey, which she absolutely loved. She graduated from university and she ended up getting a job in tourism within the city. According to her friends and family, Brenda was very happy. She was always smiling and it was as if she never had a bad day. Like, you know those types of people where they always just look so positive and happy? That was literally Brenda. Friends describe her as also being very giving and just state that she loved helping people. Like, no matter what someone needed, Brenda was there for you and she would make sure to help you in any way that she could. Her mom says that she also really loved to offer her help to her elderly neighbors and she would offer them rides to like the supermarket or to the store and just offer to help her elderly neighbors in any way that she could. She also had really close girlfriends and she would spend her days working, going out with her friends, spending time with her family, and of course going to the gym and playing field hockey. During a night out with her girlfriends on November 24th, 2019, Brenda met a 19 year old boy named Naim Vera Menem at a local bar. Now, Naim was the son of a very well-known local surgeon named Oscar Vera, and his mom was also very well-known in the industry. I believe she was a kinesiologist, and her name was Marcela Menem. So, his parents were, like, very prestigious people, and then he also had three brothers, so they were a family of six. And again, I mean, his dad was a surgeon, his mom was super high up as well, so this family was very well off. So, that night, Brenda and Naeem just immediately hit it off and they just clicked. 
Their conversation was going so well that even after leaving the club, the two of them kept in contact. According to her friends, Brenda would often see Naeem in person, but if they couldn't meet up in person, the two of them would be talking on either WhatsApp or on Instagram. So they definitely were in frequent communication with each other, and Brenda's friends can attest to this and confirm that they did have, you know, some type of a relationship. Through just talking through WhatsApp and Instagram and, you know, just getting to know each other, they began forming a more formal relationship. Now, while at first things seemed to be going well, Naeem really wasn't the best partner. If he felt any type of jealousy or just like any type of discomfort, he would actually become toxic and he would sometimes get really mad at Brenda. But then the next minute, he would be happy. Now, that's pretty much all that Brenda's friends knew about the relationship. Brenda wasn't super vocal about their issues or about what was going on. She would sometimes just like mention to her friends like, oh, he's mad today because of this or, oh, he's happy today because of this. So while they didn't really know the full details of how their relationship was, they just knew that it was a little bit rocky. You know, that he was kind of moody, and again, that one minute he could be happy, but then toxic the next. Now, as for Brenda's family, they had an even smaller insight into the relationship. Her brother spoke out and stated, quote, I only knew Naeem from a photo that my sister showed me one time. She was so happy when she showed me, and she said, look, it's your brother-in-law. In case you see him around, let me know if he's behaving end quote. That was pretty much all that Brenda would say to her friends and to her family about the relationship. Her parents never met Naeem. I don't believe her brothers ever met him either. It was just that one brother that saw him through a photo. So she didn't bring him around to the family and to her friends that often. Her friends and family do say that she was a little bit more reserved when it came to her romantic relationship. And, you know, she had only been talking to Naeem for a couple of weeks at this point. So just didn't feel ready to, you know, formally introduce him to her family. Now, while Brenda was, you know, starting to fall in love with Naeem and was excited about this new relationship, Naeem really wasn't on the same page. According to him, they were not 100% in a formal relationship whatsoever, and he claims that they would only see each other to hook up. He says that the night that they met at the nightclub, Brenda invited him to spend the night together and that they ended up having sex. He said, quote, she told me that she had health problems and that she couldn't get pregnant, which is why we were having sex relations without protection. Now, what health problems was Brenda talking about? Well, she actually had ovarian cysts, so she was told that she couldn't have children, which is why she allegedly felt comfortable enough to have unprotected sex with Naeem since she really wasn't worried about having a pregnancy scare. So Naeem was like, well, yeah, we weren't really formal. Like, we hooked up with each other the first night we met. We had unprotected sex the first night as well. So he was just making it seem like this was more of like a casual hookup. But again, according to Brenda's friends, she was taking the relationship seriously and she wasn't seeing anybody else. She wasn't hooking up with anyone else. Like she was solely focused on her relationship with Naeem. However, again, Naeem claims that they were only friends with benefits and he was like, you know, I even had plans to leave the city to attend college to become a doctor just like his parents. So he's like, I wasn't even looking for a relationship because I was going to leave anyways. So in his eyes, it was clear that this was just like a little fling and that he wasn't going to let anything get in his way of going to college and becoming a doctor. Regardless of how Naeem felt about the relationship, Brenda did look genuinely happy with him and she actually told her friends that she was falling in love with him, that she felt like she could be vulnerable with him and just like really open up to him about things that she hadn't told anyone else. She said that she felt a true connection to him and that she trusted him. It's really sad to think about how she could feel so comfortable with him and how she could see herself forming a relationship with him and having a future with him but at the same time he was on a whole different page and just didn't really think that highly of her and to a lot of people it just seems like he kind of used her to like fulfill his sexual needs. So that's a little backstory into Naeem and Brenda's relationship. As I mentioned we don't really know much about it because she was you know more reserved and kind of hush hush with the details but now let's fast forward to December 27th 2019. This is about a month after Brenda and Naeem first met. That day, Brenda told him that she was pregnant with his baby. When Naeem heard this, he was shocked. You know, he was like, huh? Like, how is that even possible? You told me you can't even have babies. And that's when Brenda explained that she truly thought it wasn't possible since she did have ovarian cysts, but that somehow it happened. You know, that somehow she was pregnant. They briefly talked about it, you know, about what to do, about what this meant for their relationship, about what this meant for their future. And, you know, they were both kind of in shock that this had happened, but 
they actually had to put the conversation on hold because the two of them were actually going to go on vacation in January. Brenda was going to go to Brazil with one of her friends named Cynthia and Naeem was going to go to Uruguay with his family. So they put this very serious conversation on pause and they did continue to speak to each other while on vacation. They talked to each other pretty much every single day on WhatsApp and they would share how their vacations were going, what they were doing, what they were up to, how they were going to meet up once they returned from their vacation to talk about the pregnancy, etc. Now, some of the text messages that they would send each other during this vacation weren't really the nicest. For example, on January 1st, 2020, Naeem sent her a text message saying, quote, I feel like you want to create a relationship that doesn't exist. Then on January 2nd, Naeem said, quote, with all due respect, I don't want any relationship with you and it's not because of what others will say, but because I don't want a relationship or commitment with anyone. You are forcing a tie between us, end quote. Then on January 15th, Naeem said, quote, I don't want to disrespect you or offend you, but I don't want to be with you. Neither one of us were looking for a relationship. You're ruining my life. Now, those are some pretty intense messages. Like, it definitely seems like Naeem, again, was just like on a different page than Brenda because as for Brenda, some of her text messages were, quote, with me, you won't have any tie, Naeem. Don't think that I am forcing you to be with me. And then in another message, she would say, quote, don't talk to me again. The next time you want to, do it through the lawyer when the notice arrives at your house. Good luck. I know neither one of us feels something, but I don't want to face this alone. Now it's different. I am pregnant by you and we can try it. So again, it seems like she was sometimes mad at him and, you know, upset with him because of how he was reacting to the pregnancy. And it seemed like she was thinking of getting a lawyer involved. But then in other messages, she kind of seemed like she was willing to try to make it work with Naeem and that she actually wanted to have this baby and, you know, form this family. Brenda also sent him messages about a lawyer that, again, I guess she had hired or maybe planned to hire. And she said, quote, the lawyer told me she couldn't get in contact with you. I told her you were traveling, so I'm sure she will call you tomorrow expect a call. So again, they definitely were not on the same page about the pregnancy or about their relationship status. It again really seemed like Naeem did not want anything to do with her or with the pregnancy. But then he would also send very contradicting messages such as, quote, yes, obviously I want to be with you, but I know it will be hard because of our mood changes. So again, it just seems like so like wishy-washy, like one minute they're feeling this thing, then the next minute they're feeling something different. So it's just really hard to know exactly how they felt about about this pregnancy and about their relationship. So anyways, the two eventually get back from their vacations, but they actually weren't able to see each other right away and they were kind of playing like cat and dog until February 14th of 2020. Despite it being Valentine's Day, they weren't celebrating. Instead, they just went to a local bar and to a pizza place to talk about what was going to happen with the pregnancy. And that's when Naeem told Brenda once again that he did not want to be a father and that he had plans to go to college and become a doctor. And of course, uh, having a baby was going to derail his plans and just make it really difficult for him to have a future. He also added that they were not ready to be parents and that they really should discuss the option of an abortion. Brenda, however, was still wanting to have the baby. She did not even want to talk about an abortion. Like, this wasn't even an option for her. So that conversation on Valentine's Day just, like, didn't really lead to nowhere and things were in kind of a limbo. After this, the pair didn't see each other again until March 1st, 2020. Now, before we talk about what happened on March 1st, let's rewind to the day before, which was Saturday, February 29th. That day, Brenda was out having a good time celebrating the birthday of one of her closest friends when she suddenly got a call from Naeem. He was telling her to meet him at his grandma's duplex, which at the moment was vacant from any tenants, and he was asking Brenda to meet him there so that they could spend the night together. And this wasn't the first time that Brenda had been to this duplex. They had actually met there a couple of times before because Naeem had the keys to the duplex and if it was empty, that's where they would go. So Brenda agrees to meet him and she drives over at around 1.48 in the morning, which was now on Sunday, March 1st, 2020. She arrived at the duplex, parked in the street, and then went inside to meet Naeem. According to him, they had sex and they were just hanging out. But then at around 3 o'clock in the morning, they ended up getting into a very heated argument about Brenda's pregnancy 
pregnancy, which resulted in her falling down the stairs, hitting her head, and dying. Naeem said that he panicked, you know, thinking that he was going to be accused of murdering Brenda, a pregnant woman. So instead of just like calling the police or calling an ambulance to see if maybe there was something that they could do to save her, he says that he just acted out of impulse. He thought that the smartest thing to do was to get rid of Brenda's body. Again, not call the police, not call the paramedics, not call her family, nothing. He did none of that. Instead, he grabbed Brenda's body, took her outside, and then put her in an outdoor grill slash chimney, which was in the backyard of the duplex. He then proceeded to light her body on fire, and then he just stood there waiting for her body to turn to ashes. Which again, I'm just like, what? Like, how do you think that is the better option than notifying someone of what happened? You know, if again, it truly was an accident. After a few minutes, Naeem realized that Brenda's body was not burning completely and that it was also taking a long time and he just couldn't risk getting caught doing this when the sun came up. So he took her body out of the grill and then realized that the heat caused Brenda's body to split in half. I know it's all just so disturbing. Like this just escalated so quickly and it just escalated to something so unimaginable. I just can't imagine ever thinking that doing this would be the right thing. That this would be like the smartest thing to do to save your butt. So after realizing this, Naeem took out Brenda's burnt body parts and did, again, what he thought was best to get rid of the evidence. He was doing so much to cover this up when, again, he could have just easily called 911 and told them that she fell and that it was an accident. He really would have no reason to do all of this, to like burn her body and like hide it and all of this stuff if he was innocent and again, if this was truly an accident. I understand being scared that even if it's an accident, you're still going to be prosecuted or you're still going to be blamed for it but I just think that's way better than doing all of this and just disrespecting Brenda even more by hiding her body by burning her by doing all of this stuff it's just it's disgusting so Naeem grabs Brenda's burnt torso and then puts it in a woven basket and then walks across the street of the duplex and throws part of her body in a dumpster he then leaves the rest of Brenda's body in the grill and goes to his parents house to get his dad's white Fiat Toro truck and then he goes back to his grandma's duplex. In the trunk bed, Naeem places Brenda's lower half of her body, which he put inside a trash bag. He cleans the backyard, you know, gets rid of some evidence, and then he drives around 12 miles away to the outskirts of the city, and he kind of semi-buries a trash bag. He finishes burying her, and then he goes back inside his car, and he says that that's when he kind of just sat there in silence for a few minutes, and that's when he started processing what he had just done. He realized, like, holy crap, I just did the worst thing possible, the most unimaginable thing possible. So as he was sitting there just thinking about what had happened, he was suddenly approached by two police officers who were patrolling the area. The two officers showed up to his car window and began knocking on the window. The cops asked him what he was doing, you know, why he was parked there. Because again, at this point, it's like in the early morning hours, so there really was no reason why he should be there. Naeem told the police officers that he was going to go back home after dropping off his girlfriend, and the police didn't really notice anything weird about him. They said that he didn't look nervous, that he looked calm, he didn't look tired. He honestly just looked completely normal. So they decided to just take down his name, his license information, you know, things like that. And then they just left him alone. So after the police officers leave at around 7 o'clock in the morning, Naeem says that he just didn't know what to do. Again, it all just hit him at once when he truly realized what he had done. He says that he doesn't even know why he did all of this. After taking a couple of minutes to collect himself, he then proceeded to go to a friend's house to ask for help. But the friend was like, no, I'm not going to help you with this because this is so evil and this is illegal and no I don't want to get involved. So the friend just like shoes him away and that's when Naeem goes home and just tells his parents what he did. As soon as his parents heard his confession they immediately called a lawyer and then they took him to the police station themselves so that he could turn himself in. Which wow I just can't imagine hearing that your son did something so brutal and so evil. It's just so scary. So at the police station Naeem confessed to everything and told them 
wasn't the whole story. At this point, of course, police didn't really know if what he was saying was true. You know, if she did just fall down the stairs and this was all just an accident. But before they could confirm that, they first needed to find Brenda. While police went to go find her body, they also called Brenda's family to let them know what had happened. When her family got the phone call, they were so confused and of course they were just absolutely heartbroken. They thought that Brenda was just at a party with her friends and that she had spent the night with her friends or you know something like that. Not that she had been burned or buried by her boyfriend. One of Brenda's brothers said that he actually found out about what happened to her through social media. Someone showed him a photo of his sister and said that they thought something happened to her and he said that when he heard that his heart just immediately dropped and again this was just shocking to the family because they didn't really know Naeem but like based off what they had heard of him and how Brenda really liked him, they just couldn't believe that he did something so evil and so sinister. While the family was trying to, you know, gather their thoughts and figure out what to do next, police were still searching for Brenda's body and thankfully they did end up finding her body in the dumpster and they also found the other part of her body in the city outskirts just like Naeem had told them. Her body was very badly burned and disfigured and she actually had to be identified by a neck that her mom gave her. An autopsy was conducted and what forensics discovered contradicted Naeem's story. Brenda didn't have any head trauma so it's not possible that she died from a fall down a flight of stairs like Naeem claimed. Brenda actually died of asphyxiation as a result of a piece of cloth that was placed over her mouth. Forensics also learned that Brenda put up a fight. She actually had Naeem's DNA underneath her fingernails so again it's not like she fell down the stairs like she was attacked, she was fighting for her life, she was scratching at Naeem and he did have scratch marks on his body so after learning this forensics were like there is just no way that she fell down the stairs. Now what really shocked forensics and police is that they discovered that Brenda was in fact not pregnant. Forensics confirmed that Brenda did have an ovarian cyst and that she truly could not become pregnant. So with all of this very shocking and just upsetting information, investigators knew that Naeem lied i that Brenda did not fall down the stairs and that he had killed her. So with this, they placed him in a preventative prison while the investigation continued. So Naeem's trial was actually delayed because of the pandemic and in the meantime, marches were being held in protest of these delays. The public and the family just wanted justice for Brenda as soon as possible, and they were not going to let Brenda's killer go unpunished. Los abogados eh, dicen que, eh, bueno, Ahí seguramente vamos a encontrar los últimos mensajes que le mandó a, a mi hermana eh, citándola a la casa de él. Eh, y bueno, y después del hecho, los mensajes que se mandó con los amigos de él vía Instagram. Tenemos dos testigos, eh, hay dos testigos, eh, son amigas de mi hermana. Eh, una de ellas eh, estuvo cuando eh, recibió el mensaje eh, de que ya le estaba esperando en la casa. Para que se, para que, bueno, que se, se junten con el femicida. Now, something that made me so incredibly angry was that on social media, there were men who were making horrible comments about Brenda's murder. As I mentioned, Brenda's body was burned on a grill and men were making comments such as, how was the barbecue? And cool, his meal was nice and warm. I mean, how can people be so inhumane? And how can they just make such disturbing and just disappointing comments like that? I don't think they would be making those type of comments and those type of jokes if this is something that happened to their own mother or to their own sister. Again, it's disgusting and they shouldn't be making these jokes about any woman or about anyone in general and it's just shocking to see, you know, there's news articles talking about how a young woman was murdered by her boyfriend and burned on a grill and the first thing that these men think of to say is that, oh, how was the barbecue or, ooh, she's nice and warm. Like, 
I don't understand. On Twitter, there was also a girl who came forward saying that she was not surprised at all that Naeem murdered his girlfriend because she claims that she also suffered at his hands before. Her name is Fernanda and on Twitter she said, quote, an ex-classmate murdered his girlfriend. It terrifies me to think what he would have done to me, who he hated. No one can believe what Naeem Vera did, but I do. And now that he murdered someone, I thought it was time to speak. It gives me goosebumps to think that that his hand wouldn't have trembled to do something to me. I don't want to be a victim. It's over. It's over. I want you to know what it is. It wasn't bullying. It was machismo. So apparently when they were in high school, Naeem actually distributed a pornographic video of her and he also heavily bullied her. Classmates also joined in on this bullying and they would call her a whore and just scream terrible, terrible things at her and just bullied her to the point where she actually had to move away. She had to leave her home because of Naeem. It's just horrible. Now, while waiting for the trial to begin, Brenda's funeral was held and people gathered to say their goodbyes. Again, this was just so unexpected and the way she died was absolutely heartbreaking. It was brutal and it was just so difficult for everyone in her life to accept. She was so young. I mean, she was only 24 years old. She had her entire life ahead of her and it was taken by this stupid man. So finally, the trial began on May 5th of 2021. Naeem was escorted to and from the courthouse with a handful of police officers guarding him. He also had on protection. He had a bulletproof vest, a helmet, and just like other things to protect him, which actually made a lot of people, including Brenda's family, incredibly mad because, you know, here they are attending court because their daughter was murdered and her killer is being protected as if he's a president or something like that. It just made everyone really angry, especially Brenda's mom, Maria. And I understand, like, why they have to protect him. You know, they need to ensure that he is taken to trial and that he arrives there safely. But still, I can understand how the family would be bothered by that. Speaking of family, Naeem's parents actually gave a statement and they said, quote, We are destroyed as a family, going through the worst moments of our lives. We offer our most sincere condolences and ask for forgiveness from the family and loved ones of Brenda, end quote. So it seemed like they were remorseful, but at the same time, they did try paying for Naeem to be at home in custody instead of in a preventative prison. So that made Brenda's family feel very angry and just kind of feel like the statement they made earlier wasn't true because they were offering their apologies to the family, but at the same time, they were trying to make Naeem more comfortable by having him stay at home. Like, he committed murder. He burned a body. He did something so terrible. So the family just felt like he doesn't deserve to be at home and be comfortable. Thankfully, Naeem did end up staying in a preventative prison, so at least he wasn't in the comfort of his own home. So the trial began and the truth finally came out thanks to surveillance footage and to witness testimonies. The first day of the trial, Naeem gave a statement and said, quote, first, I want to apologize to Brenda, to her family and friends. I am profoundly hurt and regretful about what happened. Nothing justifies what happened, which is why I'm sorry to society for this aberrant act I committed. I never had problems with women or any complaint for aggression. I always had respect for for woman, which is why it hurts me that it's being said I'm a violent man. Like what? I cannot believe he said that. He is saying that it hurts him to hear people call him a violent man when what he did is literally violent. Like he literally killed someone, burned her body, did all of these terrible things. So it's just crazy that he was saying that. Like it's absolute nonsense. Anyways, remember how earlier I mentioned that Naeem went to a friend's house after he murdered Brenda and asked a friend for help, but the friend was like, no, get away from here? Well, that friend was named Facundo, and he actually testified during the trial about what happened the night of the murder. He said, quote, Naeem told me that Brenda was pregnant. She even sent him a photo of the positive pregnancy test and some test results with her name. A few days before her murder, he told me, I'll kill myself or I'll kill her. I told him that he was crazy. I never thought something like this could happen. Which I'm just like, how did you think that would never happen if your friend was little telling you I'm gonna kill her. 
Like he was literally warning you that it was going to happen. And it's just disappointing that he didn't tell Brenda about this, that he didn't inform anybody about these horribly and just very scary threats that Naeem was making. Facundo also went on to say that Naeem even asked him for money so that he could hire someone to stab Brenda in the stomach. That way she would lose the baby. He added that Naeem really did not want to have this baby, but again, Facundo says that he never thought his friend would be capable of hurting Brenda. Another friend's testimony also added to Naeem's disregard for Brenda's life. This friend was named Guillermo, and he said that Naeem had sent him a voice message saying that Brenda stupidly wanted to keep the baby and that he was trying to convince her to abort and that in the voice message, he just kept calling Brenda stupid. So again, he just has like no respect for her and just talks about her so badly. It's just terrible. Like hearing those witness testimonies just made me so angry, not only because Naeem speaks so badly of Brenda, but also because the friends just like didn't say anything. I mean, they could have warned Brenda that Naeem was trying to hire someone to stab her stomach. Like you would think someone would try to warn you about that. Now, Naeem's social media was also brought up to further show his character and just disrespect towards women. They brought up some tweets that he posted that said, quote, you're a woman. I don't even know why you have Twitter. And quote, what a dangerous weapon is a resentful woman. Again, it's crazy because sometimes he would tweet things in support of women, but then in another tweet, he would be saying disrespectful things. So he's just so weird. Now, going back to the day Brenda was murdered, Naeem confessed that after he and Brenda had sex, Brenda told him that they needed to talk about child support before he left for college. Naeem told her that now wasn't the right time to talk about this and to just be patient while he kind of figured out what to do. And then according to him, this is when Brenda began acting hysterically. He says that she was insulting him, threatening to send a lawyer to his parents, threatening to tell his parents about the pregnancy and to tell them that they would be grandparents soon and that she even hit him in his private area. After this, Naeem says that he just reacted very badly, that this was kind of just like in the heat of the moment and that he grabbed her from behind by the neck and then asphyxiated her by placing a shirt and her own underwear down her throat. He said, quote, I wasn't conscious. I don't know how to describe it. It was instant. Everything I did was out of desperation. I didn't know what to do. I tried to get her to wake up, but she wasn't reacting. I had no one to call for help. What I did was truly unexpected, end quote. He also went on to add that Brenda knew perfectly well that he had no feelings for her and that they couldn't see each other again. You know, that he was going away for college, that he was going to be busy studying to be a doctor, but that according to him, Brenda insisted insisted that if he wasn't with her, she would send a lawyer who was going to give him a trial and just like a bunch of legal issues. So he was like, I was scared. He didn't want to get in trouble. So that's why I continued speaking to her because I was scared of her threats. He also went on to say that he was never in love with Brenda. And he even said, quote, I don't want to be insensitive or offensive, but I never even spoke to or knew anyone of her family. We only got together to have sexual relations. She asked me for money to buy clothes for the baby and I would tell her that now is not the time. A lot of times she insulted me. I never reacted badly. I always tried talking it out. You can prove it through our text messages. She pressured me more and more each time. End quote. So Naeem was basically saying that he acted out of impulse when the topic of the baby came up and that he killed her. But like I said, Brenda's autopsy showed that she was never pregnant and that she wasn't even able to become pregnant because again of her ovarian cyst. So this this is where things kind of get confusing and there's a lot of conflicting reports about how this confusion happened, you know, of how Brenda thought she was pregnant, how she had the positive pregnancy test, and there's just a lot of unanswered questions. According to Brenda's friend, she told her that her period was late and that when she told Naeem about this, they got into a fight. Days later, however, Brenda told her friend that she finally got her period, but this friend says that she doesn't know if Brenda ever told Naeem that information. Again, it seems like she didn't tell Naeem that she got her period and that she wasn't actually pregnant because according to Naeem, Brenda was indeed pregnant and showed him a positive test result as, as well as some other exams that she did. So again, it's just really confusing. Like, I don't understand if Brenda knew that she wasn't pregnant and just hadn't told Naeem yet or if she did tell Naeem and Naeem's just lying about what she was saying and that he actually just killed her for another reason. I'm not sure. I wasn't really able to find much clarification about this, so it's just a little bit confusing. Now, let's go back to Naeem's friend Facundo. 
trial. During the trial, again, he was giving his version of what happened the day Brenda was murdered. He says that Naeem had been sending him messages since 5 o'clock in the morning, but Facundo said that he didn't see any of the messages because his phone didn't have any battery. He wasn't able to get battery until around 6.30 in the morning when he went to a friend's house to play video games, and that's when he was finally able to charge his phone. As soon as his phone powered up, that's when he finally saw all the messages from Naeem. Facundo said, quote, He asked me where I was, and I told him I was at a friend's house, and he responded with, Okay, I'm on my way don't stand me up. And then Facundo replied with, okay. Then he says that Naeem arrived at around 7 o'clock in the morning and that he told him that he had just killed Brenda and that's when Facundo responded through teary eyes that he just ruined his life. He told Naeem to leave and then he went back inside to join his friend and he told his friend exactly what just happened. How Naeem had just confessed to murdering his girlfriend and asked his friend what they should do. I mean, it's not every day that your friend confesses to you and tells you that they killed someone. So the two of them decide to call Naeem's older brother named Gabriel. Now, Gabriel was actually at an after party that was finishing up when he got this call from his brother's friends at around 7 o'clock in the morning. And this is when the friends told Gabriel everything, you know, about how Naeem had just confessed to killing Brenda. Gabriel is listening to this and he is just so confused and he's like, I need to see what's going on in person. So he asked one of his friends named Mauro to go take him to his grandparents' house House, which again is the duplex. According to this friend's testimony, Mauro, he said that when they arrived to the duplex, they could see that Naeem was closing the front door and that his truck was actually parked in the garage with the truck bed facing the street. In the garage, Gabriel asked his brother what happened and what he was doing. And that's when Naeem responded saying that he was simply cleaning the backyard, but that he was now finishing and leaving. They talked for a bit more and since Naeem wasn't confessing to what Gabriel already knew, that's when Gabriel finally told his brother they're like, hey, I know everything. Your friends already called me and told me that you killed Brenda. After this conversation, Mauro says that he just went home and that he left Gabriel there with Naeem. Mauro added, quote, I thought it was a sick joke, but when I woke up, I saw a message from Gabriel and I realized what was happening, end quote. Now Facundo, his friend with the video games, the brother Gabriel, and Mauro weren't the only ones to see Naeem the night of the murder. A woman named Iris, who was actually a neighbor of the dupe Plex testified as well. She said that she was woken up by an explosion and when she went to her window to see what was going on, she saw an intense amount of smoke and flame. She said, quote, while I watched, I saw a person from behind that had something hanging in their left hand. I only remember that it was red. Then she decided to just go back to sleep because the person went back inside the house, so she just figured that these people were just doing like something weird. She then went on to say that in the morning at around 7 o'clock, a.m. she saw a man who was different from the one that she had seen earlier in the middle of the night and that he actually raised his hand and waved at her. Now she says that it looked like there were two different people there that night and then her daughter Carla also testified that she heard mumbles of more than one person. However it was later determined that there was no second person involved in the murder so so the two people that Iris saw that day were Naeem. She just got it a little bit confused. Yeah a lot of people found it crazy that Naeem waved at his neighbors while he was literally burning Brenda's body. Now, some people state that he probably did that just to kind of like keep up the ruse and to make it seem like everything was okay by waving and acting as if nothing was wrong. But other people are like, how can he literally wave to his neighbor while he knows that he's burning his girlfriend's body? Now, as for surveillance footage evidence, there were two times that Naeem was caught on camera. He was caught on camera throwing something away in the dumpster, which was in front of the duplex, which he already told police that he did. So that was already confirmed. The second time that he was caught on camera was when he was driving home after burying Brenda's lower half of her body around 12 miles away from the duplex. They also did find ashes inside the truck, which were Brenda's. Now, the second day of the trial, which was on May 6, 2020, this would have been Brenda's 25th birthday. Before starting that day in court, Brenda's mom, Maria, read a message and she said, quote, My beloved daughter, today you would have been celebrating your 25th birthday, eager to receive your gift. But no, today is a different day with a lot of pain and tears in my soul and in my heart because I have to take flowers to your grave because a murderer named Naeem Vera Menem 
him, took your life away in an instant. He took away your hopes and dreams, your cheerfulness, your future plans, your right to build a family, to have kids. He took everything, my beautiful girl. He also killed my life and your brother's life. We don't have you here with us physically anymore, but in every conversation you are present. I love you and I will love you forever. We will never forget you because you are a special girl. I love you, I love you, and I miss you immensely. I don't know how to live without you, Brenda. I hope you will pay with your life in prison, Naim Vera Menem, so that you never hurt another girl. You deserve the full weight of the law. Happy birthday, my beautiful girl. I'm sending kisses to the sky. End quote. Which just, wow, that just made me so emotional. Like, really, like, her child was happening during her birthday. It's just so sad. I mean, yeah, she should have been celebrating her 25th birthday with her friends and with her family and just having fun and enjoying her youth. But instead, you know, her family was going through this horrible trial and having to hear the horrific details of what Naeem did to her. And it's just, it's all just so unfair. So with the witness testimonies, the surveillance footage, and the DNA evidence, Naeem was found guilty and sentenced to life in prison on March 14th, 2021. The judges said that Naeem killed Brenda because he did not want to assume the paternal responsibility of a child as it went against his life plan. The jury's decision was unanimous and they said that Naeem was a psychopath with no empathy who viewed Brenda as an obstacle that he had to destroy and he just took it even further and destroyed even more after she died by burning her body. They also added that Naeem thinks of himself above others. Before hearing his sentence, Naeem apologized to the family and said that he is sorry to Brenda's family and just sorry to society for what he did. To this, Brenda's mom said, quote, I don't feel hatred or resentment, just pain, which I will carry my whole life. You could have left my daughter, but you decided to kill her in the worst manner. You will never have my forgiveness, end quote. When his sentence was read, Brenda's mom just let out a big cry of relief. Justice was finally made. When Naeem was escorted out of the building, there were so many people outside screaming that justice was made and Maria was telling everyone thank you for being by her side throughout this entire journey and she was just thanking everybody for all the support that she felt from the entire community. She said it is truly not possible to thank everyone and that she is just eternally grateful. She said she will now live with the memories she has left of her daughter and she can now mourn in peace since she hasn't been able to fully mourn you know during the trial. She also added that she knows Brenda can rest peacefully now that justice has been made. She also said that she will never forget Naeem's family because not once did they go up to her in person to apologize or to offer their condolences or they didn't even look in her direction during the trial or anything like that. So she just feels like they don't really feel sorry and that they feel more sad that Naeem is in jail and that he's going to be in jail for the rest of his life than feeling sorry about what happened to Brenda. They were also trying to make Naeem's life in preventative prison more comfortable by getting him benefits and things like that. So Maria says that she's just very disappointed in Naeem's family because again it just seems like they really don't realize the severity of what their son did. Regardless of that she says that she is happy that justice was made and that she's happy that Naeem will never get to be out. So yeah Naeem will spend the rest of his life behind bars. He not only destroyed Brenda's life but also destroyed her loved one's lives and everything that he did just makes me so angry you guys. Like the fact that he said that she fell down the stairs and hit her head. Like first of all that's not even true because of course the autopsy denies that but second of all if it was true like why couldn't he just call the police or call the ambulance and say oh my god like an accident happened like can you please come help me and see if you can save her like how does your first instinct go to oh my god let me burn her body and turn her into ashes and just hope that no one will come look for her like did he really think that brenda's family wasn't going to find out that she was with him did he think that no one would know i mean i don't really get what his end game was with this but the fact that he's trying to make it seem like oh my god like i was like disoriented like I don't know why I did this. It's just really disappointing and it's just very like disrespectful, even more disrespectful because Brenda's family is like, no, like he knew what he was doing. So him trying to say that this was like an accident and that he didn't know what he was doing is just a big lie. My heart just truly goes out to Brenda's loved ones and I'm just so sorry that this happened to her. I really admire all the people that stood by Brenda's family during the marches, you know, making sure that her case didn't go cold or unpunished like so many have. Three years after Brenda's death. Her family remembered her on the day she was murdered and 
and one of her brothers said, quote, The pain is always there. I remember Brenda in the best way. I have in my heart her smile that she always had. I like to think I will always carry it with me. End quote. Maria says that Brenda was her motor in her life, and although she does have other children, Brenda was her only daughter, and you know, they had such a special connection. She said that she feels like her life really has no meaning anymore, and she actually had breast cancer at the time of Brenda's death, but she took a break from receiving treatments because it was all just too much. Like, going to get treatments for your cancer, and then the next day having to go to your daughter's murder trial, it's honestly too much for anyone to handle, but she says that now that time has passed, she is going to resume treatments. I'm not sure if she already began them, but I just truly hope and pray that she is healthy and that she's doing well. Maria says that she has some days full of tears thinking about how Brenda is gone forever, and then other days she's full of smiles thinking about Brenda and just remembering all the memories that they have together. It's honestly just a horrible, horrible tragedy, and I just hope that Brenda's family continues to have support and that they all eventually find peace. But with that, that is pretty much everything I have for today's video. This man, I mean, wow, he is just truly evil and his behavior is so disgusting, frightening, and it's just so disappointing. Again, he could have just left Brenda. You know, if he really didn't want to have a baby, if he didn't really want to date her, he could have just left her and just gone to go to his college and lived his life as a doctor and just moved on. But instead, he decided that he had to take her life and then burn her body. How does that make sense? I mean, it doesn't make sense, but still, it's just all very, very crazy. And what happened to Brenda just absolutely broke my heart. I would definitely love to know what you guys think about this down below. As I mentioned at the start of the video, there are some amazing organizations that are trying to end violence against women and also resources for women that are experiencing DV. So all of those organizations will be linked in the description box down below. If there are ever any other cases that you would like me to cover, make sure to leave me a comment down below so I can add them to my list. Or you can also submit it through my case suggestion form, which is in the description box down below. If you guys are new to my channel, welcome, bienvenidos. I would really appreciate it if you guys could hit the subscribe button down below so you guys can join the familia. And also, please give this video a thumbs up because it really helps the channel as well. Oh my god, what a difficult case to talk about, you guys. I just hate it. Like, this violence needs to stop and... God, if you don't want to be with someone, don't kill them. Like, there are so many other options that you can take. And it's just, it's hard to listen to these cases and talk about them over and over again because they have so many similarities. And it's really, really scary how so many women are killed at the hands of the people that they love. So anyways, with that, again, definitely let me know your thoughts. And I will see you all in the next video. Bye, everyone.